G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. Once again, I'm joined by the Joyce Master via Skype from Bunbury. Today, we're going to do a video where we pick uh, all the Australian reserves teams. So Joycey actually came up with this one during the week. He messaged me saying, we should do a team out of the 22 players um, who didn't make the cut for the All Australian team because there are a lot of good players who missed out. So For sure, um, yeah. I reckon the format is we've, we've both prepared a team. So I reckon we'll just go through from top to bottom, backline to interchange, go through our um, selected team. And then at the end, I reckon we get the people watching the video to vote who did a better team. What do you reckon? Oh, geez. All right. Yeah. Sounds good. The pressure's on, man. Yeah, I know. I feel like I'm, I'm going to forget one or two players, so please don't slaughter me too too bad. Mate, but it, it happens to me every video. Yeah, I get yeah. slaughtered, but it's all right. It's good fun. <laughs> Yeah, no, me on my toes. Uh, why don't we start with the back lines? You can tell us your back three players in the back pocket and fullbacks and stuff. First of all, back pocket Nick Haynes from GWS. Other back pocket is Dane Rampey from the Sydney Swans. And my fullback, I've actually gone for Tom Barass. So that's going to surprise a few people, but um, for key defenders this year, he's right up there for most spoils per game, 87% disposal efficiency and six and a half marks a game. You know, you really can't write Barass off, I don't think. So I feel like that's generous, even as an Eagles fan. I think uh, a lot of people will, especially Eagles fans right now, will be thinking, God, Barass, he sucks. But uh, he did also miss... He missed a bit of footy too, which I think counts against him. Yeah, last two weeks, uh, you know, he's he's probably been a little bit unlucky, I think. But I think if you look at general solid body of work, he's done very well. I'm going to go with my back three now. So I've gone with another eagle, not Barass. I've actually gone for Brad Shepard. I think he's been a really underrated player, playing on talls and smalls in the back line. Good intercept play for the Eagles. My fullback was actually Robbie Tarrant. Yep, um, fair right. I, I thought about Daniel Talia. He made the squad, but I thought Tarrant uh, has been not underrated. I think he's been talked about a lot this year, but um, yeah, ended up going with uh, Chris's younger brother there. Dane Rampey, like yourself, I have got in the team. He was unlucky not to make the cut, but it was competitive this year. So let's move on to your halfback line. Um, I've actually gone for your boy, Brad Shepard, on the halfback line. He ranked, Did he rank first for Marks? Um, in the AFL this year, at least as a defender. Center halfback, I've got Mark Blitzarves from Geelong. I mean, I, I can't really say anything about him that everyone doesn't already know. 3.5 tackles a game, 6.2 spoils. And I've gone Daniel Rich. He's more of an, of an offensive halfback. 6.6 .6 rebound 50s per game. He's great at setting up the play. I think he's a big part of Brisbane's revival this year. That's really good. I really like that Daniel Rich call. He didn't make my team, but I'm starting to think maybe I should have put it in. So the guy I picked instead of him was Jack Crisp. Uh, he's had a really good year off the half-back line for Collingwood. Um, yeah, I think a lot of Pies fans will vouch for him. He's had a really good year. Like yourself, I went for Blitzarves. He's probably the number one key back after the guys actually in the team. I had Haynes on my back lines. Uh, back, uh, sorry, back flank. So you and I had Haynes and Shepard swapped around. For those viewing at home, I'll get a graphic up on the screen now. Man, do you want to just run through your back six again and I'll do mine? Yeah, so back six is Nick Haynes, Tom Barras, Dane Rampey. And the halfbacks are Brad Shepard, Mark Blitzarves, and Daniel Rich. Cool. And I went with Shepard, Tarrant, and Rampy as my back three. And then Crisp, Blitzarves, and Haynes rounding out my back six. All right. Now, let's get uh, moving on Physical. to the real... Yeah. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> um, now, that's after the podcast. Let's have a look right inside the guts um, of the team. All right. And why don't you tell us your, uh, go with your center line and also throw in your on bowlers and ruck and stuff. Starting on the wing, I've actually gone for a bit of a big call here. I've gone for Lockie Whitfield. I know he did miss quite a few games, but you can't argue that his form this season is outstanding. Average 28 disposals a game and 6.8 score involvements is pretty ridiculous for a guy that plays a mixture of midfield and halfback. Clayton Oliver is my center. Everyone knows what Clayton brings. He, he did start off a little bit slowly this year, but... Finished up averaging seven clearances and 30 disposals game and another really solid year for, for a young guy. On the other wing, I've actually gone for Adam Trelaw. He, he probably plays a bit more centre for Collingwood, but I think the strengths of his game are his running ability and his inside 50 work. Yeah, so maybe a little bit controversial leaving Brad Hill out of the wings there, but yeah, 
didn't, didn't find room for him. Yeah, I like you went for Trelaw, pro- most prolific ball winner this year. Um, I actually think he could go pretty high in the brown low and yet didn't make the All-Australian team, which is a funny one there. Uh, but he's just been so consistent this year. Dusty Martin cracks my centre position there. Um, a li- little bit of favouritism on the fact that he's just such a good player and arguably in the top three or four mids in the comp. Um, and his second half of the year was huge for Richmond's revival. And then on the other wing, I've gone for Mr. Hubert McCluggage, uh, yeah. who is a really unbelievably impactful player considering how young he is in that Brisbane side. So take us through your on-ball division now. Pretty hard seeing as there was two two great rucks in the All-Australian team. So I've gone with Jared Witts for the Gold Coast Suns. I think he just took out the best and fairest for them the other day. Most hit outs in the league this year. I think he's been pretty impressive to be fair. He's one of the few shining lights up there at the Gold Coast. My first on baller, I've actually gone Ben Cunnington. Probably I think his best year as a neutral fan watching watching him. You know, he's a bit of a beast. Averages 7.3 clearances a game. I think um, having Cunnington and Oliver you know, as my two sentiment there, like you'd win so many, so many of the clearances. And the last on ball, I've actually gone for Luke Shuey. Probably a little bit stronger in the start and middle of the year than he was at the end. Very even player. Um, I think that's that's his number one strength, but still averages, yeah, 6.5 clearances, 5.4 score involvement. So he's getting involved in the right areas. Yeah, nice one. Very well researched. I like it. Uh, I, like you, went for Wits. I think he's the clear next best ruck in the competition and probably Gold Coast best player at the moment, it has to be said. I went for Shuey as my first on baller. So, you know, same as you, had a really good year. And uh, one player that uh, I don't... Did you have? Or maybe I'm going crazy, but I went Josh Dunkley. Yeah, maybe a little bit later in the piece, I'll mention Josh Dunkley. Oh, okay, fair enough. I had Dunkley cramming into my side at the expense of Cunnington. I just think... I don't know. That, I think that's going to probably um, rile up a few North fans, but I just think Josh Dunkley's entered... Well, I, I said end of the year, but like even just after about round seven, he was unbelievable and um, a future gun. So, uh, yeah. So, why don't you just take us through your midfield six again? So, midfield six is Lockie Whitfield, Clayton Oliver, Adam Trelaw. The ruck is Wits. Um with Ben Cunnington and Luke Shuey on the ball. So I've got Trelaw and McCluggage on my wings around Dusty Martin in the guts. Wits in the ruck, tapping it down to Shuey and Dunkley as the on-ballers. All right, now let's move on to the forwards. And uh, Joycey, who have you got as your half-forward line? So my first half forward, I've actually gone Dustin Martin here. I think, yeah, it's it's understandable if you play him midfield. He plays a lot of a lot of time half forward and midfield. But, you know, he still has 0.8 goals a game and seven score involvements, which is pretty impressive. Centre half forward, I've gone Ben Brown. Um, I think absolute joke that this guy didn't get an All-Australian, frankly. Up until the last round was just about the most impressive full forward for the season. Other half forward I've gone for is Gary Ablett. You know, again, super impressive season, probably pretty unlucky not to scrape into the side. But yeah, 1.6 goals a game. That's pretty impressive from Gaz. This whole this half forward line for me, these plays all made by all Australian teams. So I'm surprised none of them made it. And I'll start off with Dane Zorko. Probably would have been a shout for all Australian captain had he been in the equation. Obviously he wasn't. Great leader for the Lions up there. I think he leads the league in inside 50s and he's right up there for pressure acts. Ben Brown, as you say, uh, yeah, he made my all Australian team. Very unlucky not to make it. I think he's, yeah, definitely definitely deserved it and I had Mitch Duncan in my All-Australian team and he makes my flank just he played that real Whitfield kind of role this year as a um, forward and I think he had a career best season I didn't pick Whitfield personally I just thought he didn't play enough games uh, and Duncan yeah. deserved it so uh, no, that's but, yeah. understandable he probably or he probably would have made my All-Australian team had he actually played the whole season but yeah um, all right so go with your forward line oh sorry your forward three so forward three, um, first of all, I've gone Jordan Dugowie. I think after the grand final, people thought he was going to be an absolute world beater this season. And a lot of people were kind of let down when he wasn't on that elite, elite category. But I mean, still, he kicked something like 40 goals for the season, 7.2 score involvements a game. So he is right, right up there in terms of small, 
small half forwards in the game right now. My full forward, I've actually gone Josh Kennedy from the West Coast Eagles. A little bit of an interrupted season, but again, 2.2 goals a game. Um, I think he might have played, you know, 19 games, something like that. You can't, you can't really argue against Josh Kennedy. And the other small forward, maybe a little bit of a surprise packet here, I've actually gone for Tom Papley. Actually averages 13 pressure acts a game, which is pretty amazing. 1.7 goals game, so 37 goals for the season. I think, um, yeah, he more than deserves a spot. I like it. That JK one interests me because uh, another one that the Eagles... I think it's kind of tearing apart all well, the fans are at least but you're right he did actually have a pretty decent season on my fourth pocket I've gone for Gary Ablett who made your team as well like you said like 1.6 goals a game he's uh, he's really carved out a niche there as a old man uh, yeah. he's doing really well <laughs> Tom Lynch makes my full forward position. Uh, I think yeah. he was huge in the second half of the year in particular, or at least it felt like that. And uh, yeah, I think he's probably the next best key forward. And then yeah. I've gone for another surprise. I really like your Papley selection. He might feature later on in my team. But right. I've gone for another small forward in Alex Sexton. Now, yeah, that's a good uh, one. Yeah, because he kicked 39 goals, I think, at the Gold Coast team. And I think that's um, actually quite an achievement. So yeah, I'm sure I've missed out someone really obvious there. But Alex Sexton makes my uh, forward pocket there. So um, to summarize, Joycey, your forward six. So I've got Dustin Martin. I've got Ben Brown, Gary Ablett as my half forwards. I've got Jordan Degoe, Josh Kennedy, and Tom Papley out the front. Awesome. And I've gone Zorko, Brown, Duncan in my half forward line. And then Ablett and Sexton crumbing at the feet of big Tommy Lynch at full forward. Now... Uh, we've gone for an interchange bench, both of us, obviously. So uh, why don't you take us through the four players who didn't quite make your team, but will be rotating off the pine. So the first player is Tom Lynch. He'd be really good to to bring on. It could definitely, you know, move Ben Brown up the field, play him as a bit of a ruck and then have you two, two tall forwards again. I've got uh, Josh Dunkley, Western Bulldogs on the pine. You know, great player. Um, he's a really real barometer for the Western Bulldogs. I think when he's playing well, the Western Bulldogs see him up and about. I've got Dane Zorko. He's going to be great to come on as midfield slash forward. And my last spot is Mitch Duncan from Geelong. Again, pretty outstanding wingman midfielder. Now, I have gone for a kind of one player of each position. I've gone for no keys on the bench. I didn't pick a second ruck. I just didn't think they were justified. Brad Crouch is my first reserve midfielder. I think he's had an underrated year at the Crows. Uh, probably been their best player. Brad Hill has actually slotted into mine as a pure wingman. He's one of the best in the business. Tom Papley made my bench as the first reserve forward. Um, I did, As I said, no keys, but um, like you said, had a really good season as a pressure forward and obviously hit the scoreboard. And Jakey Lloyd, another Sydney Swan. Most Well, I think he had like, was he third in the league for disposals overall? So, yeah, um, pretty impressive. Yeah, I mean, he probably didn't have the impact as some of like the other players picked ahead of him, but, um, you know, deserves to be rewarded um, <laughs> as the last spot in my second 22 for all <laughs> So a massive award for him here. Um, I'm actually surprised how we actually had some, like we lined up quite a lot on that. There weren't that many players I missed out. I'm maybe thinking Cunnington was probably very unlucky to make mine. Is there anyone like straight off the bat that you think maybe you could have considered, or are you pretty happy with it? Um, you know, I'm fairly happy. I think um, yeah, maybe Talia. Probably pretty rough to not get a spot. Um, Brad Hill as well. But to be honest, in general, I'm fairly happy with my team. I'll take it. Cool, man. So in WA, the question of all Australian captain or vice captain was a fierce topic. It was. It was. Um, why don't you tell us who made your captain and vice captain in your team today? My vice captain, actually, I'll start vice captain, is going to be Gary Ablett Jr. Um, always been a great role model um, in the AFL. And my captain, you know, it's kind of tough. I don't, I don't think any of the players I have a captain in there. In their teams, I might have to go Josh Kennedy. You know, he's just um, good leader, pretty good bloke. So yeah, I'll I'll give him 
the captaincy of my team. I'm going to go with uh, the player I mentioned before who is recognised for his leadership. Dane Zorko is my captain. Like I said, if he had been picked on this field in the All-Australian team, I think he would have gone pretty close to vice-captain. The other player I mentioned for his leadership was Jared Witts. Um, maybe he can co-vice-captain with Shuey because I think that <laughs> because I want to include my boy. No, um, now probably Witts, if I had to pick one, uh, yeah. would be the 2IC to Dane Zorko. So Queensland clubs well represented there. Thanks, guys, for watching and tune in next week to see the All-Australian team that didn't make our second team. <laughs> <laughs> I've uh, I got a bit of a question for you just as a little taster for the end of the video. So if you could bring back one past AFL player and add them to your team right now, who would you bring back and why? I want it off the cuff. First player to come to mind is Judd because I thought you were angling Chris at Judd. an Eagles player at first, so my mind went there, but... I think arguably he probably is the best pass player I've ever seen. Right, okay. Considering Ablett's still playing. Uh, yeah, and I think I was choice. a big-bodied midfielder um, with his explosive speed is always, you know, and a desirable attribute. What about yourself? going to go for a little bit of a wild card. I'm going to bring back Jason Akamanis. Um, I think as a kid, he was my favorite player to watch. Um, and he'd be just so good as like a half-forward midfielder. So, Jason Akamanis. Yeah. I choose John Coleman. <laughs> I choose Scott Thornton. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in to this Reserves All-Australian Team video. If you liked it, make sure you hit subscribe or stay subscribed if you're already a subscriber. Um, like we always say, it's finals month, baby, and we are doing so much AFL content, and that will continue into the off-season with all this trade and draft drama going on. Joycey, thanks again for joining us. We'll get together real soon and do some more videos. That sounded, yeah. that sounded sexual. I said we'd get together and make some more videos. <laughs> yeah, <Cool>. it did. <laughs> <laughs>